I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> I got the mic. Um, you, you mentioned compassion as, as one, of the, one of the roots to happiness. I think it was this, in the your third section. Um, but I, uh, some people that, uh, that I know um, from the Tibetan tradition put a great deal of stress on compassion. Um, and the, the, the two forms of meditation which, which seem to be taught most uh, in Britain now are mindfulness, which is rather uh, self-regarding, and compassion, which is other-regarding. And I would really like to know what, what you think should be the proper balance in, in meditation um, between the, the, the pure awareness um, and, and compassion, which is reaching out. Um 关注别人怎么去帮助别人他也可以正念禅修先开始就是像帮助别人的这种意念他可以发挥这种力量 um, so uh, for mindfulness meditation, um, it is um, about um, the uh, concentration about uh, yourself, but the motivation can be different. Um, your intention can be different. You can um, meditate, do the mindfulness meditation just for your own interest or your own, your own benefit. But at the, at the same time, you can do mindful meditation for the benefit of other beings. You can have these two kinds of intention or motivation. But if you have the motivation for only your own benefit, then the, it's not so powerful. It will be weakened. Um, but if you do the mindful meditation for all the other beings, then the merit and the power will be stronger. Um, so it, it really depends on your intention or your motivation. Then about the compassion uh, meditation or practice or cultivating compassion, that is a, a category of meditation emphasized in Mahayana Buddhism. Um, that is, you want to help others. You First you make wishes, I want to help other beings, like that. And then you go out, take action to do that. Um, and when you reach a kind of level of this uh, meditation or cultivation, then you can really help other people. You can see nowadays some people, they just 
one person, but they can help people all around the world. That's because their meditation, their realization have already reached some um, high level. So they, they can do that. So I think um, mindfulness meditation and uh, um, compassion and cultivation or meditation, there are just the different levels. So at first, you may have to focus on mindfulness um, meditation to improve your own practice, your own state of mind. And then when you reach um, a very um, um, good level of that kind of meditation, then you can go ahead to do the um, cultivating compassion or that kind of meditation, compassion meditation. Um, hello, thank you very much for sharing your opinion. Uh, my question is, what is the Buddhist view on um, death or losing your loved ones? Um, because I feel like even if you kind of like try to uh, find your inner happiness, I feel like those would be the constraints that would kind of like limit um, like for you to reach that point. So my, like, what I wonder is how we should view um, death like how do we see death and so that we can actually um, kind of like decrease our level of suffering. Thank you. Okay. 教授刚才说他的问题非常好怎样子正确的去看待死亡然后让我们的就是在面对死亡的时候的痛苦能够减少我也觉得你的问题很好 <笑> 就刚开始的时候我们会关心人的生老死病生老病死这是必经之路虽然有些民族和有些国家根本不能提四字就他不迹象他很忌讳他但实际上我们佛教呢就首先的是对死亡有所准备而且我们会讲一切文化都是无常
That's something unshakable. We all have to die. That's something we have to prepare in our mind. So when if you have already prepared it in advance before some loved one die, when they really die, you may still feel sad, but you know they are not going to stay in this world forever. And uh, you, because you already learned those principles, this, this four phenomena, no one can avoid, then you will not feel extremely sad. And uh, here, um, people said, I'm not trying to praise or see some see high of Buddhism, but for a lot of Buddhist practitioners, because they have this kind of training, they have already familiarized their mind about what's going to happen in their life and in their friends or their loved one's life. So when they face suffering, uh, when they face death, they were, they know this is something normal. They will not be so sad. So if we all have this kind of training or this kind of preparation in advance, then we can face um, anything in our life calmly. Welcome Xiangfangshanghu 这样子都好过不放 Creatures, because uh, he, she's talking about uh, liberating those captured animal, you know, fish or creatures like that. Um, because here it's so hard to um, buy live um, creatures, especially freshwater creatures in there, like fish. Um, so they buy um, marine creatures. Uh, uh, and uh, she, her question was, um, if they buy marine creatures, they have to go to the oceans to release them. So her question was, uh, should they do this, um, still do this, or they should, um, so, so it's very hard. She wants to get some, uh, get, get some suggestions from Kimball to suggest them to do it better. Kanangfangshan要如果海鲜就是比较远一点的地方,我们在 <coughs> 在在那边卖的时候有时候经常放到开两三个小时开车的地方每天去就所以可能英国不是很大的就是到海边也不会很很困难所以有如果要是放生呢就是最好是到海里放啊就是让它的生命就很安全的度下去这方面可能要想办法就是关于放生的问题可能还要就是你们很多对放生有兴趣的人呢应该可以就关心因为我经常看到欧洲这边就是动物协会的人经常视为游戏呢有很多一些对保护动物方面当然是这方面度我相信有很多经验你们好好研
give us uh, advice for her is um, so in I think she thinks uh, it's hard to release those uh, ocean fish to oceans because maybe it's too far. Can we say that because here um, in UK, UK is not so big, so it's not hard to go to the ocean side <laughs> to release them. Um, and uh, like uh, back in China, people always like drive two or three hours to release those uh, captured uh, creatures. So uh, he thinks that it's okay for them to still do this. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, mm, so, and also, it can be said that maybe they should study more about how to put them in a safer place, how to make them live better. Mm. Uh, because in Europe, people uh, emphasize a lot about uh, animal rights and uh, protection. So um, he thinks it's a good thing to do. Um, yeah. Well, I'm sorry there's not time for more, but uh, I, I want to say that uh, this has been an amazing experience for for many of us. I think all of us. Uh, we, we don't often uh, have the opportunity to receive such wisdom on the most basic things of life. We tend not to talk about them. Uh, and this way of talking about them, I think, it is, uh, is a quite wonderful way. Um, I think it, it is the case, in, in my view, certainly, that many of the problems of the West will only be solved by, by greater use of the wisdom of the East. Uh, I think that this is a wonderful example of that, and uh, we, we've been very privileged uh, to have it. So, Kenpo, you've got your your, your mem memento <laughs> <laughs> from from the, the LSE, and I, I think we, we would all like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. <laughs> what a lovely.